Okay, so today is October 9th, 2020. I'm here interviewing Jiaxuan Long, and my name is Chelsea Wen. So the first question is, um, when and where were you born, and can you describe what it was like to live there? Yeah, sure. So I was born in Beijing, China. Um, it's actually a really big city. So it's the capital of China. So it's kind of like New York, really modern. Um, so I guess I was born in a pretty artistic family. So my um, family are uh, and family friends are all artists. So that's the culture I live in. So I'm really interested in Chinese art and culture and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So both of your parents were artists? Uh, my dad was artist. My mom is, uh, was OBGYN. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so how did your parents raise you and what kind of expectations do they have for you? Yeah, so um, they were actually polar opposite. My dad was like, um, he's super kind, super nice. Um, like super helpful, the, the most helpful person, everyone that they know. Um, he, he always like raised me to be um, kind, helpful, always lend hand to, to other people who's in need. And my mom, not that I, not saying she's not kind, mm -hmm. and she is just like, she's a fighter, that type of person. Um, she had a pretty rough background growing up. So, and, and she got to where she was by just fighting her way through it and working really hard. So that's how she taught me. And one of the things she always said is just fight for it. If there's something like, you know, like there's a, a difficult task for me, she always just say, fight for it, there's a way. So yeah, I think I got a bit of both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, did you have a lot of responsibilities while you were growing up? Um, yeah, well, kind of. Um, I'm, I'm their only child, and my parents were pretty old when they had me, 46 years old. Um, so growing up, my, like after my dad passed away, I kind of have to um, take care of my mom since I'm the only child. Um, and she wasn't in a um, really good mental state, so I just really have to take care of her. Like in a sense, I feel like I'm the parent; she is the the child. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, did they have any expectations for what they wanted you to do? Yeah. Um, well, my mom. My mom actually just want me, want me to do anything other than being a doctor <laughs> since she was the doctor in China. Um, yeah, she, I, I know it might not be the same than US, but uh, being a doctor in China right now is, might not be the best career path. Um, like, you know, a lot of issues in that room. Um, yeah, but but she just she she just only want, wanted me to uh, study more, learn more, and choose whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um. So when did you start making art? Um. So that's that's a hard thing to to measure, I guess, because my parents, uh, my my dad was um kind of taught me to make art since I was very little and I wasn't really pursuing anything professionally but I'm always interested in it so um, moving to the U.S. Um, it's kind of hard for me to find a job initially um, so I just started to uh, do something like that and I was really interested as well as well so I'm just trying to do something like that and see if um, there's a way I can um, not only sell it, but also promote uh, the culture a little bit, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So did you start focusing on art as your career when you moved to the States? Um, kind of forced to be in the beginning. Um, so I, like after moving to the state, I'm just, um, 
trying to not only make a few uh, make some art but also trying to carry other artists art a little bit um but i think for me that's more like an interest rather than a career path so um right now i uh, right now i'm pursuing my pursuing my mba and also um i have a job lined up after graduate um full-time job so um the artist will be a side work for me but um i'm not gonna just completely uh, throw it away because there's still an interest even though it's not um like a career mm -hmm. yeah. um so did you go to college in china before you came to the states yeah, for un undergrad, um, I actually studied uh, language, uh, English and Spanish. So mm -hmm. really useful in China, not so useful here. <laughs> um, that's why um, that's why after uh, coming to the state, I'm pursuing my MBA, um, try to uh, pivot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, did you also get an MFA? or no just mba well yeah, mba focusing in marketing so mm -hmm. yeah okay so um what significance does the dough figurine art have to your family so that's really significant actually so dough figurine is a really ancient form of art it start started in song dynasty which is almost a thousand years ago. Um, and at that time, it was just something like a little thing that uh, children play with, or uh, people actually just make a few dough figuring and cook that and eat that. So it's like really enrichment to the food, um, mm -hmm. not really a serious art. Um, but I think it also lost in time for a long period of time. Um, people knew about this art form, but uh, because it's lost in popularity, maybe it's not that practice anymore, practical anymore, people don't really do it any, anymore. Um, my grandpa, he was really interested in any art form like that. So he actually uh, learned how to do it, um, digging through books and seeing like the street performance, um, like just to make a few like really simple character for the children to play with that kind of stuff and he kind of invented it and um just to make it a really like art um so i think that's a big part of my education growing up uh looking at how he did and um the attempt he 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 went through to bring back a like a culture piece to get uh, back to life. And I think that make a huge impact on me. And I'm really interested in, in that, um, not just this particular art form, uh, but also all kind of traditional Chinese art. So that's why I started to, to do that. Besides it's fun to play with. It's like Play-Doh, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so did you mostly learn how to make them from your grandpa? yeah well he passed away when i was little so i started to learn with him when i was really really um little like playing of play-doh um mm -hmm. that kind of thing so and then i after he passed i learned from my dad who's also very very good at making that um yeah and after that i'm just trying to explore it on my own mm -hmm. um so when you're making them, how do you decide which, because you use them to depict like historical events, right? How do you decide what you want to do? Mm, so it's like any kind of art making, right? Um, just something that comes to you. Um, maybe you just speak to you. You just decide to make an art piece like that. Um, I'm also really interested in a lot of traditional Chinese literature. Um, so that's a lot of my, like the scene of my art came from. Like my favorite, absolute favorite is uh, The Dream of Red Chamber. So I did a lot of um, classical um, piece based on that literature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
So do you focus mainly on literature and like folk stories or like actual historical events? Um, I guess both, like mm -hmm. everything. Like I know uh, there are also people say, saying uh, maybe it lost touch a little bit to reality, to the modern world. Um, so people like a lot of, there's a lot of demand for making uh, more modern scene but for me what really interested me is just to bring that traditional art form and combine with traditional um historical event or traditional literature so for me a lot of my interests are making them to um either past event or past book or folklores or any sort of fairy tale stuff like that mm -hmm. so do you think you would ever be interested in making them more contemporary or since you live in the states now would you ever consider having some american influence yeah um i'm trying to do that a little bit more as well um just to um i guess so that it can speak to more people uh, as a way to uh, promote it i guess yeah, so I'm kind of do, started doing that as well. But still, uh, I think majority of my work is still more traditional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed a difference in how your art is received in America and China? Yeah, well, I think a lot of it is because it's already a well-known art form in China. Um, in China, it's actually recognized by UNESCO as a national uh, intangible cultural heritage. So people in China already know about the art form. So, uh, and they, they know a little bit about how much detail goes into that, how much hard work goes into that, um, where, uh, and, and history, right? And it, they are also more familiar with the, um, the influence of that particular piece, like, you know, based on historical event or based on like a folklore that they know of. Um, in the U.S., where it's not so much, and even for more moderate, a uh, moderate um, um, material like scene, um, they're still not really familiar with the um, the material itself, with the the art form itself. So I think that's something I have to overcome um, to make those art pieces here. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you think the art community is different in China versus the States? Mm, I, I think there's actually quite different. So in China, um, the art industry, to my knowledge, is more fully developed in recent, well, I won't even say fully developed, but more developed in recent years. Whereas in the state, the art market already pretty advanced. People buy it. Um, um, a lot of time because they really like to appreciate certain art and maybe just hang at home and, you know, like, because they like, they appreciate the art. Whereas in China, I think a lot of art, rather than being appreciated, they, they are a lot of time bought as a collectionable piece, um, prepared to sell or like to go up in value later on. So I think that's the main difference. So I, I do hope in China, um, eventually it will get to the state that people um, buy a piece of art is not just because it's collectible, but also they appreciate it. So I, I think in the US, this is perfect. This is good. Mm -hmm. um, so what was it like to appear on TV for your art? Um, yeah, I think it's just something that I really, um, I think it's a really good opportunity to promote the piece because even though a lot of people are, already know about it, they don't know enough. They think like in the back of their mind, they're thinking this is a really uh, traditional art form. Um, like it's, it's more like a history piece rather than something that's close to their lives. So I think my mission is just um, hopefully make them think, oh, this is something I can have in my life as well, or um, I know more about, or I think it's interesting, or, or like, even though, it, uh, even though it's a traditional piece, it can still be for young people. And I think my age um, 
speaks to that a little bit as well, because traditionally you see this art form is uh, made by a lot of old artists, um, whereas I'm not that old. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so how did, how did you come into contact with the people who had you on TV? Did you reach out to them or did they find you? Um, they, they, they find me uh, initially, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think that most of your, the people who enjoy your art or seek out your art are older or younger? Mm, as for now, it's still the older generation because, which makes sense um, mm -hmm. because it is an older art form and people do appreciate, like older people do appreciate it, especially they do appreciate more historical um, theme. Um, but uh, I mean, the the this generation is not getting any younger. There's there's always newer clients who come in the market, not older ones. So it is a a challenge. But something we need to do is to um, just to appeal to more younger clientele, more younger generation. I mean, it's not just it's not even about selling it. I'm okay with not selling it to younger generation. It's just, hopefully, they're more interested in it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, but you said that, that art is not your target career, right? Right, right. Okay. So, it's um, surprising to me because you, you've had so many galleries and like exhibits, and like you've been on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that 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 is true, actually. Um, I don't know. It it feels like, especially in U.S., a lot of artists. Well, I mean, in China and U.S., same. A lot of artists, um, even though they they kind of made a fame of their art, they're not really using it to support their living necessarily. Uh, it's still not that easy to be an artist, um, mm -hmm. no matter where you are. So. Uh, I think just for like a living standpoint, it 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 is better off for a lot of artists to um to make their art on the side and have a stable career. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm I'm okay with having a stable career and use what I whatever I earn to use that money to promote the art. I'm okay with doing that as well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you think is the most difficult part about being an independent or a freelance artist? Um, I think, I mean, being a freelance artist, it means it's not stable. Like there's no such thing as job security. Well, I mean, it's, it's my career, but there's like, you would not know when you will have your next client, especially you can see it in COVID era really well um i mean if everyone is suffering the last thing they're thinking of is buying art they buy food first right so that's something like if, if economy take a hit um the first like industry get affected it's probably something downstream like art yeah mm -hmm. um do you have a favorite piece that you've made um well, they're all like my babies. <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite favorite. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I guess it's something um, like a, a genre. It's, it's something in, uh, in walnut. So there are type of uh, figurines that we make really miniature that can fit several character in a walnut. So that is, I think, in an artistic standpoint, that is really something precious to me. This is so hard to make and they're, they're really um, pretty to look at. But, they're, but they are hard to make, so I don't make them anymore really that much. So. Mm -hmm. um, do you see yourself ever teaching others how to make these so you can pass it on? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if I have children, I would definitely teach them. And honestly, to anyone really interested. But again, this is not something really easy to make. It take years and years, decades of training, right? So, um, it's like I, I I really want to teach everyone. But hopefully, there's someone can uh, really like it enough to really um, practice for decades to perfect their technique but if not i'm okay with everyone just look just look at it and know the value behind it <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um do you have a favorite exhibit or gallery appearance that you've had um well i will have my uh a duo uh exhibit in the coming January uh, in Archway Gallery at Houston area. Um, so the title about that piece is uh, exhibition is called Dual Identity. So that's something um, something in the top of my mind as well to speak up about the um, self identity of Asian society or all, man all minority in the US. So um, I think that's a perfect chance for me as well to um, maybe insert my value into my art and see um, if uh, that can get a like people to think. Um, so yeah, and that's something that I'm really looking forward. Mm -hmm. um, are there other artists that inspire you? Um, a bunch of other artists. Um, oh gosh, I I don't know the English name um, for a lot of them. So there, I guess the most in, most recent show I've seen um, is from a really realistic styled artist. He had his exhibition two years ago um, in Houston Art uh, Museum. Um, I, I forgot his name in English, but he do um, a lot of human sized piece that are really detailed and capture people's emotion really well. I think that really inspired me a lot. Yeah, the last show I saw is two years ago. That's really COVID, <laughs> COVID spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so how long do the dough figurines last? Like, do you have to preserve them in a special way? Um, yes, yeah, so we, I sun dry it, um, so that will make it last pretty long. Um, well, I still have my grandfather's piece from probably a hundred years ago, almost something like that. So that, like, it, it's, it can last that long for sure, yeah. Hmm. Um... So do you see yourself getting into different art forms and mediums in the future? Yeah, I'm really interested. So for my upcoming show, I'm also trying to do um, a lot of mass face mask painting for like Chinese opera. So that's another way to express the identity, right? So that's something that I'm trying to do as well, trying to explore um, different, different art, just as an interest. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that, or how do you feel that your race has maybe affected your ability to be successful as an artist in America? Mm, so, I think that's a, I, I don't know how can I say that well, because um, I think we have a lot of pretty vocal um, Asian artists or Asian people in the community, especially in Houston. Um, but I think even that, even though we have a large, relative large present now, I, I do feel a lot of time when I talk to my friend or like other people from other race and culture, um, they still see our art, our culture, our uh, food festival, how, uh, like costume, everything as an um, exotic thing, not mainstream. Um, so I think there's, that's that. So I do feel like um, even though there are a lot of individual um, effort we make, there's definitely something more um, there is to do. And 
I, I think that can't be just localized individual effort um, because it's hard to change people's perception. Even, even you're trying, everyone's just trying um, to, to do that, right? So I think there's, and I'm not saying we're demanding some sort of governmental uh, intervention, like making Chinese festival a public holiday. I'm not saying something like that. I'm just saying if Asian people around the country um, can be more vocal on a variety of issues, maybe, um, not just about art and culture, and that would at least make, make others think of us aware of us more um, and that would probably help a lot um, if they're aware of us more um, of our present will become more mainstream yeah. mm -hmm. so are you saying that you think that asian people should be more vocal about like community issues or political issues everything yeah not just something that affect us individually, but everything. Yeah, I think we do. Like, I think a lot of time Asian people are, um, because of our, our culture, we are a lot of time in mind our own business in our own uh, bubble. Because I know, like, for example, there's a Chinese word called zhong yun, like, it's mi like being the middle. That's a good thing to do, being not overwhelmed, not uh, being extreme, uh, not showing yourself. But I, I don't think that's the way for it in the US. In the US, we probably should um, be more conscious and be more vocal about everything, not just um, things that affect us. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, switching topics a little bit, um, how did you immigrate to the U.S.? Um, yeah, that's, that's a long story. <laughs> so, um, my husband was working, uh, in China at the time that we met, um, so that's nine years ago. So he decided to get married in China and five years ago, his company decided to, um, transfer back to the U.S. and mm -hmm. here I come. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, after you did undergrad in China, what did you do? Um, so after I did undergrad in China, I was actually working uh, for Chinese government, uh, a subdivision for Chinese government for a while, handling, um, uh, how do you say, student, uh, uh, scholarship to apply to different country, like applying scholarship for a student going from China to Spain to study there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and then you just, you were doing that up until you left? Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, so how was the process of immigration? Was it difficult? Was it for me, it's not particularly difficult because we were, uh, I was married to a U.S. citizen for a couple years already. And um, fortunately for me, his company handles um, everything. So for me specifically, um, the process is not hard. Mm -hmm. So did you guys know anybody in the U.S. before you moved? No, uh, well, he's family. He he is a uh, Chinese American. Um, but his family has been immigrated here uh, before he was born. So um, when his parents were little, actually, so uh, so his all his family are in here. But that's the only people I knew here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does most of your family still live in China? Um, yeah, all of my family still living in China. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about moving away from them? Oh yeah, that's that's definitely the most challenging part. Um, I am a huge family person, super close to my mom, and she is uh, seventy six years old now. So um, yeah, I'm I'm constantly uh, <laughs> missing her, concerning about her um 
yeah, and my husband and I asked her to uh, move, come with us, but I think it's for her to abandon all her um, friends, family, culture, everything, um, everything she have and uh, come to a completely new world and with a language she don't know. Um, so yeah, I guess in a sense, I need her more than she need me. So she's still there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you haven't been able to see her recently because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But thanks to technology, we can um, WeChat <laughs> to see mm -hmm. her face. So. Mm -hmm. Um. So how was it like adjusting to American culture? Uh, I mean, there's definitely a culture shock. Um. Mm -hmm. And it, to be honest, because his family, my husband's family is from um, Michigan, so mm -hmm. really up north. Um, I think there is a bigger culture shock for, for him as well, mm -hmm. <laughs> moving from Michigan to, to Texas. Um, I mean, in a good way, but still a culture shock for both of us. Um, I mean, the first thing I noticed is like I'm, I'm still using imperial system for everything um I, i'm not able to convert anything to metric like yeah uh, uh, sorry metric system so i have to convert everything to imperial system yeah um yeah I, I, that's just something on the top of my mind that's really 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 different yeah yeah um so how I guess you've been here in the U.S. for six years. Yeah. Uh, did you move to Houston first? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how did you start to build a social network and like find friends? Right. So a lot of the um, contact, the, the friends I have are from uh, our community. So uh, coming here, like, I don't know any anyone. Um, so. I'm just starting to do art, and um, after that, I just trying to um, see if there are a way to promote it. So I show it to a bunch of galleries, and that's when I made a lot of friends. And um, yeah, so so that's that's actually how did I um, get my first step out of the door for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then when did you decide that you wanted to go for an MBA? Um, I've been thinking on it for a couple of years, uh, and, and I started to do it, uh, last year. I started, uh, yeah, started to do it last year and I'm on an accelerated program. So I'll be graduating the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Um, how does that fit in with what you want to do in the future? Um, I actually, I think it fits pretty well. So from making the dough figuring and promote it in China and in here, I really think, I really find a lot of interest in marketing loan. Um, so big, since I'm deciding to do an MBA or anything related to business, um, I really started to think I'll have a focus in marketing and um, that's, uh, what it got me to my previous internship uh, in marketing and that's that's also what led me to my a uh, job um, in the future uh, for the next year it's also in marketing so I really yeah really enjoy that mm -hmm. um, so once you started putting your art online did you notice a difference in who was interested in your art since you were able to reach more people? Um, sorry, can you, what do you mean by difference in? Like, um, like when you first started showing art here, it was just for the local community. And then when you put your art online, it's accessible to more people. Oh yeah, um, I think for, for sure. Um, I think right now the world of art is really rapidly expanding because we have internet right you just um get exposed to more people i mean in us i think in general is pretty similar um down south um 
people have the same back uh, art uh, same like culture background so they don't really know the culture or literature aspect of my art but if the art is grabbing them that's the people who's really interested in and probably interested in learning the culture as well so that's um yeah that's that's something um that i'm i'm trying to do putting it online and i'm also trying to um whichever city i travel to like leisure um i also bring my art to see to go to to the galleries local galleries and see um if they are interested in um, putting in, in their exhibit and putting in their website and see if I can attract more people from different region. And so far that has been successful too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so what do you think is the importance of art in your life and in the world? Oh, it's, it's too important. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I think it's harder for people like under pandemic to think the importance of our art which is understandable um because if you you know you need this essential for surviving uh first but after we pass that um i think a highly developed advanced society any so uh, society like that would um, really need to educate everyone within the society the importance of beauty not just art and culture but also like just pure beauty standpoint i think um people or a culture can appreciate beauty that's the that's the signal that they are advanced and they're passing the the life essential thing so i think that's actually just a really important measurement um whether if people like art that that symbolizes a, a really developed society mm -hmm. um do you feel like you have a specific mission with your art or a specific message yeah i really want to want people here to know the importance of um, protecting, preserving intangible cultural heritage, not just those figuring, but all sort of intangible cultural heritage in China, in uh, Asian specifically, because that's oh, where my expertise are, but also around the world, um, because those, those are living history. And if people, like if the technique are lost, people, are, people know the technique are lost, um they may not have that part of history anymore so i think this is something really important that i'm making my mission to 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 spread to the u.s mm -hmm. um so in the future would you want to also show your art in other countries other than the u.s yeah for sure um I'm, I'm trying to take it one step at a time, but if it's possible, um, I, I really want the, the world to see it as well. And that's something my grandpa and my dad has been doing. So I, I, if there's an opportunity, I really, really want to follow their footsteps and hopefully more people around the world will see, will see it. Mm -hmm. um, do you know any other go figuring artists in the u.s uh not in the u.s that i've known mm. but in china there are what um there's mainly well my family there's mainly mm. uh for the art form as intangible cultural heritage um there's my family's doing that but there are other families uh there are other people doing it um quite well actually uh, from culinary uh, world that started to do that oh like they, they make it to eat um from the beginning yeah uh, in the beginning yeah but then they start to progress and start to uh do more advanced uh figuring but that's how they started yeah mm -hmm. that's that's really cool <laughs> uh-huh um so 
Can you talk about how you started to work for Verizon? Yeah, so um, as an MBA student, I was trying to find a uh, internship within marketing realm. Um, I, I had a few offer and I think Verizon is a good company and they're doing, try, really doing a lot of good things, especially in the COVID era. So um, that's where I picked and uh, uh, through the internship, I think it's a good fit. That's why I signed the contract with them. So, um, How does it feel to work for a company and not yourself? Oh yeah, that's definitely something, um, a new experience for me. Uh, I mean, I used to work in a subdivision of Chinese government a little bit, but that's very different experiment. But I think it's good experiment overall. Um, I really like um, being working in a team and um, I, was, I, I was pivoting to this new industry and new position. I didn't know much about anything. So everyone has been uh, incredibly helpful. So yeah, really, really liking the experience. Mm -hmm. And how has it been working from home? It's actually like it more than I expected because I thought working from home will cut off a lot of the experience. You don't get to interact with people face to face. But I think um, it actually enhanced the experience, at least for me, because this gives um, the company, uh, Verizon, a chance to um, get us involved with more higher level topic, like talk to the CEO, talk to the VP. Um, uh, so that's something we could not have the opportunity to do if we do it in person. So I think for me in a big organization, um, I actually really like the, uh, the remote experience. Um, also no traffic, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and how has quarantine affected the way that you make art? Um, I actually have been more uh, efficient. Um, well, being a Chinese, Chinese, I I lived through uh, COVID, lived through um, the the uh, SARS and everything. So I, I I'm pretty good at getting pretty good at quarantine now. So I'm, I've been living under my rock and not going out going out at all for a few months and mm. since I'm stuck at home I just have to make art <laughs> so yeah for my art I think that's that's I, I can't say it's a bad thing for my art <laughs> yeah um so in the future do you see yourself continuing to work in marketing and art and split your time or do you want to transition to one or the other eventually no, I think uh, splitting my time will be, will work. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think for me, uh, doing art, making art and promoting art is relaxed time for me. I enjoy it as much as vacation. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I can definitely do that on the side of, of my um, mean work. Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you think is your favorite part of Chinese history and culture and how do you incorporate that into your art? Oh, there's too many good things in Chinese culture and history. Um, I, I can't even just pick one, um, but I think all the history are condensed to the the culture we are having now, like our day-to-day -day life, you can see everything. Um, you can see a lot uh, in our daily life from the history. Um, you can re reference back the book we we are reading now um, to historical like fraction of history. Um, and I think that's something that I try to find inspiration in. Uh, from my daily life to making uh, my art. So even though it's um, inspired by ancient time, but I don't need to just journey in history every day. Like from a, like what I've read today, I can still 
make reference to history and think of something amazing to do to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so how active have you been in the Chinese community in Houston? Um, so I've tried, I, I try to uh, be as involved as I can. Um, there is a Asian um, society of Houston. So I think they are, they are really involved in, in a lot of like uh, Asian events and they, they hold a lot of events and, uh, and trying to do a lot of good things to educate all uh, race and culture about Asian, um, about, about Asian uh, community. Um, I'm just trying to be as involved as, in, as I can to be included in their event as well. Um, so yeah, that's something I try to do. And um, other than that, just in my daily life um, to uh, tell my friends and my classmates and my coworkers more about Asian culture, Asian art, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any significant mentors in your schooling or through art or for your MBA? Yeah, I mean, um, by mentor, like I, uh, I, I do have a lot of professors that helped me dramatically. And I think I feel pretty good personal relationship with a few of my professors as well. Um, so that's something that I, I didn't expect I can do. Um, yeah, but that's really precious to me. Yeah, a lot of them are Asian too. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so during COVID, there's been an increase in anti-Asian sentiment in the U.S. How do you feel about that? Um, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to say that, but I, I feel like if, I, well, that might be harsh to say, but I think they know um, we are not, people in China are not responsible for, mm -hmm. we're not releasing the virus. So we, we're a victim and we are trying to do a lot of, uh, people in China are trying to do a lot of damage control as well to help the rest of the the world um as american transplant I, I think i really appreciate the effort um that they did to help control covid um and i think i i think we've made that people here in the us are also trying to make that really clear to the entire society um i don't know if there are there definitely are still a lot of people still um, felt the opposite. Um, so I, 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 I don't know um, if there's a good way to um, further tell them the truth, um, to educate them, to be more, to be m more mindful about what's going on. Um, but I, I'm just hopeful that uh, everyone can be more, more, more open-minded about, you know, like different, different things, not just different culture, different people, different activity, different things. So I think if, if people are more open-minded, it, it shouldn't be that much of a problem because it, it is natural if people have a tendency to worry about things that are different than what they usually see or behave, right? So. Um, I think you were kind of mentioning earlier um, about Asian Americans being less vocal about certain issues. What do you think that the Asian community can do to make that better? Be more vocal. Mm -hmm. I, think, um, I think that's actually the case for younger um, generation, um, mm -hmm. especially like the 
second generation of Asian American, uh, third generation, and you know, um, they are more vocal. I think it is diff a little bit difficult, and I acknowledge the difficulty um, for a lot of um, Asian um, first generation Asian American depends on their upbringing. For example, in like if like I am coming from China, it might be hard uh, for one to um, to speak up against the government, whichever government they 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 are living under right now. Um, some people may think that's a, a that shouldn't be a good thing to do. Um, you know, it depends on depends on culture, but I do think um, for second third generation um, and younger people, um, they 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 are um, speaking up a little bit more. And I think that's a good thing that we should keep up with and keep doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so was your, was your husband born and raised in America or did he grow up in China? He was born and raised in, in America. Mm -hmm. um, he, his family, uh, his grandma, grandpa uh, come from Hong Kong um, mm -hmm. and it's, so their their parents have a traditional Chinese upbringing, but um, for his generation, um, for one, he don't speak Chinese anymore, not uh, Mandarin, not Cantonese. Um, he don't really um, celebrate any traditional Chinese festival anymore. And um, I, I think that's like, a, that's true for a lot of other cases as well. So, I think for a lot of Chinese uh, or sorry, Asian immigrant, they kind of um, start to abandon their their root after a few generation. I don't know if that's something um, the parents intentionally do um, or just just something not intentionally do. But still, I think that's something we we can be more aware of to edu when educating our next generation and um because this is important to to keep your root mm -hmm. um and how do you think you would find the balance between keeping in touch with your roots but also learning how to be successful in, in american society where you grow up well i don't think those two are entirely contradictory mm -hmm. um i I think you can definitely do both. You can, um, like, it's same to be a successful, to, to, like, in any society, um, like, uh, there's a lot of good quality that you can, you can gain uh, from a, from, from, from a good uh, background, from like a good family education, and mm -hmm. to be successful in um, all culture. And that's something I think all parents should do, no matter where their culture background is. And I think, you know, like uh, just keep touch, keep in touch with the traditional um, Asian root. It's just some something that can be done, not like super consciously. Um, every, like, cause I think, other people do that well, uh, do that as well. White people do that. Um, Hispanic do that. Uh, black people do that. Every mm -hmm. everyone do that. Um, I don't think uh, for Asian, in order to be merged into the mainstream society, we necessarily need to abandon abandon our root. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So what are your goals for the future? Um, yeah, just trying to do both, just juggle both world um, marketing and art. Um, so yeah, that and family, I guess that would be my, my goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I don't think I have any more questions. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, I think that's it. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. I will stop recording this right now. Thank you.